Hello, hello. Once again, it's Chuck Grish. We are back in on the King Project. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to share with you guys Dr. King and some of his great work and the short time and legacy uh, that he was with us. Uh, today's discussion is going to be evolving around an acknowledgement Dr. King received uh, in 1964. But let me start in with a quote. Love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Yes, today I'm going to be talking about Dr. King in 1964 and his Time magazine cover. But let me uh, let you guys know that Dr. King actually made the cover in 1957 as well. Uh, and this was called The Attack on the Conscience was the article. And it was really coming off uh, Dr. King really having national prominence off the Montgomery bus boycott that he did, he was involved with, uh, that uh, the group he was with called MIA at the time. Uh, Dr. King was 28 years old, and he's really advocating for the rights uh, you know, of people that were unable to advocate for themselves. And he was acknowledged for that, and I just thought I'd add that into today's discussion. Also, Dr. King was acknowledged 1964, Time Magazine of the Year, as I said earlier, for his work that he was able to get done in 1963. To give you a little background on what happened in 1963, uh, his fourth uh, child was born, Bernice. Uh, also, he wrote a book called Strength to Love, and that was really a collection of a lot of his sermons and that were really uh, talking about segregation and religious values connected with the Civil Rights Movement and some of the different things that they had issues down in the Deep South. Uh, also, um, Dr. King was jailed that year um, um, due to his Birmingham involvement, um, as we all know. Uh, he was involved with that Birmingham movement. Um, that's the one that got really ugly and really nasty. We had, you know, cattle prods. We had uh, police dogs and, and clubs and all that kind of stuff. We all are well aware of that violence that took place. But this was really that time and really where it was going on for Dr. King. He was arrested, as we all know, uh, that year. Dr. King was arrested, actually, and jailed. Uh, and so when he was jailed and arrested... Dr. King uh, made an attempt to call his wife to check in on her and the young child that was just uh, delivered, and they didn't allow him to do that. And Coretta Scott King actually had to call, I think then, uh, Robert Kennedy uh, to be able to let him make that call, and then they ultimately said bail and released him. And that's really after he was released from being jailed when the violence took place and a lot of the different things that went on after the fact. Uh, according to the King Encyclopedia for Stanford, uh, as far as the article is concerned, um, Dr. King was uh, uh, appreciative of that, but there also was some issues. He was kind of upset about um, them uh, really attacking his clothing style and his sense of humor that he did not have and, uh, and how often he used a lot of metaphors in his great speeches and discussions that he had in his sermons. And so uh, from what I understand, that was in his inner circle that he had, he had kind of expressed that. But he was really, um, really happy with the representation overall and the acknowledgement uh, that he got from this uh, Time Magazine uh, Man of the Year, now we know as Person of the Year. He actually wrote the uh, editor or the owner of the magazine, Henry R. Luce, a thank you letter that was very well known now. Uh, and then here's the quote of this article and, and his thank you to it. The image of the Negro is certainly one that many of us like to see carried in the pages of our national periodicals, for it does much to help grind away the granite-like notions that are obtained for so long that a Negro is not able to take his place in all of the fields of endeavors and that he is lazy, shiftless, and without ambition. And Dr. King was really, really happy uh, that he uh, was able to represent uh, pretty much the civil rights movement. He said that in some publications that he was happy that he was able to kind of give a face to this uh, movement and, and give actually a lot of people uh, and hope, uh, a lot of African Americans hope that uh, you were able to be successful and be acknowledged for that. And he represented that well. And I just thought that was an interesting, nice little story that Dr. King was uh, acknowledged for and how he was again able to give back and really put it back on the civil rights movement and really not make it about him. Um, and I just really think it's a testament to his character, a testament to a lot of great things that he was able to kind of accomplish after the fact uh, of this 1964 um, acknowledgement. As we all know, he was killed four years later and he got a lot of work done within that short period of time and really evolved uh, into a lot of different things 
and doing human rights and you know economic equality and really getting on the, the world level and really addressing Vietnam at the time. So Dr. King uh, then uh, really, uh, again, evolved from this acknowledgement, evolved from a lot of different things he was recognized for to really use that platform to really push the agenda. This is Chuck Greenspeed, GUD Worldwide. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to share with you guys once again, Dr. King, and some of the great work. We're doing this for the whole month of October 2017. Uh, we got a few days left, and we got a lot more information to give you. Thank you so much, guys. Take care.